Hello healers and health seekers. It's me, Ichoda, healing on the medical medium protocol for two years and one month now. Whoa, go me. <laughs> it's made such a profound difference in my life. Finding the medical medium books and all of the healing that I've seen for myself. This is why I make these videos. This is why I come to talk to you about it because I got to share this. I have to. It's who I am. It is in my nature. If I can connect you with a resource that is going to help you, I feel like I've done my job in the world. <laughs> like my purpose is being fulfilled. And I love it. I love that. What am I going to talk about today? I am going to talk about how healing is my full-time job. <laughs> I am going to talk about how since I have started this, because um, a lot of people ask me, Ichoda, do you work outside the home? And I do not currently work outside the home. I have not worked outside the home in, I can't, it's a long time, <laughs> 18 years. I've been a full-time mom, a stay-at-home mom, first for my first son, and then when my second son was born for him. We homeschool, we unschool, and that occupies my life. Now he's getting older and my healing. And then when I was sick, being sick occupied my life almost exclusively. It sucked, it was horrible uh, when I was my sickest. And then as I started healing, healing is occupying my life, but it also gives me space in my life for other things, which is freaking fantastic. And one of those things is I, have enrolled in a class to become an emotion code practitioner and then I'll do a body code practitioner and then I'll do a health coach certification so that I can make a living professionally helping people on a deeper level because that's what I feel called to do as a result of my healing and I just I want to take it out into the world and I want to be able to share it with people in a more profound way and and really help people heal and maybe generate an income to help pay for all of these supplements and all this organic food that <laughs> costs a lot of money. <laughs> it's true though, I'm not lying. So healing is currently my full-time job and it has been for the past two years. It actually was for longer than that, but before my full-time job looked like researching like all day long looking up research and seeing what I could figure out and learning and doing as much as I could because I really couldn't get off the couch. I really couldn't do anything but read. And sometimes it was really even super hard to read because I was so brain fogged and then I would just watch comedies because that's the one thing that, I mean, you don't have to think <laughs> at all. I don't have to use my brain and I was able to do it and just kind of decompress and whatever and when I could think I would read and research and read every research paper I could find and read everything about every diagnosis I got and I would see doctors and that was my full-time job because I only ever left the house to see doctors because leaving the house was scary and painful and I had severe chronic pain I had severe chronic fatigue I could barely shower I would shower maybe once a week and it would take me out for a few days like it would just it would just melt me. It was so hard. Like any anything was so hard. I couldn't couldn't wash the dishes in my house. I couldn't do the laundry. Like if there was a day that I could like fold laundry, it was super exciting to me. Like I'm like, "Oh, I I did that today and I felt really great." Because there was so little I could do. I couldn't even load the dishwasher. <laughs> you know, I couldn't anything. I definitely couldn't unload the dishwasher because it involved bending and it would aggravate my pot symptoms and that was bad because I would get so dizzy and but I couldn't I couldn't do those things I couldn't reach up I couldn't if I left the house it was such a big production and it took so much effort and so much time and it was so hard and it was only ever to see doctors <laughs> and uh, I had to everything was so slow and it would just take so much out of me on very rare occasions, I would really, really push myself and like leave the house to do something else, but like something fun for my son. 
But those were few and far between, and I would be, like, completely unfunctional for, like, a week or more afterwards, sometimes two weeks, sometimes a month. It was really, really hard. Then I found medical medium, and then little by little, just getting, you know, when I first found medical medium, like, could I, could I do the celery juice? I didn't know, you know, my husband was preparing all our meals at that time and he would just make enough food for me to have the next day because it was hard for me to prepare anything. So I could just put it in the toaster oven to heat it up for my son, you know, so my son would have food and I would have food. And my poor exhausted husband, he was really doing the job of like five different people. I'm not even kidding. Cause he had a full-time job outside the house. And he also, we were getting our house ready to move. <laughs> we couldn't take care of it. It was too big. Our house, I don't, it was just, it was too big for us to take care of. The property and the house was too much. And so he was getting it ready to move, but that is a lot of work, you know, like almost, it's not almost, but it's more work than actually just taking care of a property. But long-term we were like, we're, it's too much for us to take care of because I couldn't help at all. And so he's getting the house ready to move. He's cooking all our food. He's doing all the grocery shopping. He's working full time outside the house. He's coming home and playing with our son and taking care of him and doing everything that I couldn't do. Like I, I was functioning at the most minimal basic level. And because I'm a mom, like I had to take care of my son, but I, it was like, you know, immediate needs only like it was just not like how I would want to not how I would want it to be on any level or how any parent would want it to be on any level it was not enough and yeah so when I found medical medium then it was like let's get the celery juice in let's see if I can do that and I could do that and then I you know I started getting the foods in I was starting to be able to make food myself and my husband didn't have to he only would come home and cook dinner and he didn't have to make everybody's meals all day long and so he would you know um and then after a while eventually I was able to do that and I was able to do more and more and I as I healed I I gained that back but it, it really is my full-time job I like to I like to I mean I do prepare a lot of food in the kitchen I have, you know, three people in our family. My husband will eat anything, thank goodness. So whatever I prepare, he is delighted that I prepared food. He is delighted that now he does not have to do all of the cooking. And he still cooks, but only when, occasionally. You know, only if he wants to make something. Not because he has to. And that's the greatest, right? It's it's fun to cook when you want to. It's not so much fun when you have to. So now that's what I do. I So I have these three people to prepare food for. Again, my husband will eat anything, but my son has very particular food needs and wants. And he eats a certain way, and I eat a certain way. And so I am in the kitchen a lot during the day, and that's okay with me. I'm, I'm, it's not a problem. It's, it's, I have rediscovered my creativity and my joy in the kitchen, and that's something that's huge. I did a video about that a while back, but... I love that because for such a long time, even as I started healing, I thought, you know, it, it was like a job to make food and to get everybody's stuff done. And it didn't feel creative and it didn't feel fun like it had been before. Cause I always loved cooking before I got sick. And, and the joy went out of it for me. And it just, cause kind of the joy went out of life. It went out of everything. And I just didn't think I was going to get that back for the longest time. I thought it's just going to be this way. Like cooking is just a job now. It's not fun, but it, it became fun again. And now it's like I can be creative and, and come up with recipes and, 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 and like, I don't know. I, I just feel the joyfulness in the food and in preparing the food and the rituals of preparing the food and, you know, knowing that I'm giving my family this sustaining nourishment that's really, really feeding their body and healing their bodies and giving them everything that they need. That's everything to me. I love that. So I'm in the kitchen a lot <laughs> because I make food for my son all day. I'm making smoothies for me and, and for him and, you know, juices for me. And I make, you know, I prepare foods for him, whatever he's eating and stuff like that. 
and, you know, getting our tinctures and stuff. And then I have other rituals around, like, every morning after I get all the foods together, I journal. And then some days I'm making videos, <laughs> which is an amazing thing. It took me 18 months of healing before I was ready to feel like I could make a video. And that was a big deal. And so it's like as I heal more, there's more space to do other things in my life. And, you know, for a while we were going to a friend's house once a week and and so we had sort of that break in the week, but I had to always make sure that I had, you know, well, what I just did when we would go over there is I would just, I had this big cooler and I would just fill it full of smoothies for myself and then, and then, you know, fruit and snacks for my son so that we had stuff to eat while we were there. And that works. I mean, we can do that. Now we can go out and we can leave the house and we can do stuff when we want to, but we really like to stay around home. My son's kind of a homebody and I have become kind of a homebody because I like being near my kitchen. I like being near my bathroom. <laughs> to be honest, I like to stay close to the bathroom because I eat a high fruit and veggie diet and my, you know, digestion is still healing. And so I do a lot of elimination, a lot of detox. And so I like to be by a toilet. <laughs> That's just how it is for me. I go to bed earlier than maybe some people. I go to bed. I like to be in bed asleep by 10 o'clock at night. And that is an amazing thing for me because sleep used to be so difficult. I'll do a full video on sleep at some point. It, it, but it's it's because I've done all these things to like make, get my sleep better and my sleep has healed and being able to sleep a full night has healed for me and it's been an amazing process and I I like sleeping. I like I feel so much better when I know I'm when I'm asleep by 10 and I get up at around I don't know when I get up 7 6 or 7 whatever and I start my day I get up at varying times, but I'm always asleep by 10. Sometimes I need more sleep, sometimes I need less. Sometimes the cat wakes me up, sometimes my bladder wakes me up, sometimes my liver wakes me up and says, it's time, <laughs> it's time to get up and go. So I do. And that's, so that's part of my ritual. So after I get all the foods together in the morning and I have the heavy metal detox smoothie and we're settled in, I like to journal. And I'll journal all about like how I felt the previous day and what I ate the previous day. Well, I try to write it down that day, but then I don't always remember. So I can always write it the next day. And so I keep track of that. So then I'm making sure that I'm paying attention and then I'll, you know, start other things in the day. Like sometimes I'll make videos. And so I'll do, I have, you know, household chores like laundry and whatever. And always the dishes is part of my morning routine so I don't even think about that but you know this is my day and then I want to get movement in when I can and and bouncing and and I try to do that and I try to incorporate all those things into my day and then just making food like it's a whole day and then in the evening it's winding down and three nights a week I do the castor oil pack I do detox baths. I do things like that for my lymph system and my liver and, and flushing things out, helping the detox, helping support the detox, helping ease the detox, things like that. So that's my, it's a full-time job. It's a full-time job for me. It really is like it's, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be that way for everybody, but this is how it is for me. And this is how it's been for the past two years. And I like it this way. And I like that like gradually I increase what I do outside the house or I increase other activities in my day because as things become a part of my routine, it becomes easier. As time goes on, I am able to incorporate more things. You know, things just become a natural part of my routine. They become part of my rhythm and flow. I like to spend a lot of time where I can sort of meditate and contemplate and watch the birds or watch the sunset or just quiet. Like I really, we, we have a very quiet life and I mean, that doesn't mean we don't <laughs> like, you know, have laughter and, and joy and things like that. It's just that it's, it's kind of mellow and chill and Zen and peaceful and slow moving. I tend to move, especially in chronic illness, really, slowed down the pace of my life to like I just call it like living life in slow motion and it has 
gone. <laughs> nope, it hasn't. I would say it's gone to more of a normal pace. Like it's gone up a little bit, like slightly, but we still live at a much slower pace than most people, I would say. Especially like most people just going through their lives and not dealing with chronic illness. Like it's not comparative at all. It doesn't mean I can't get places on time or anything like that, but just how long... I just don't rush around in my life. I just don't, like, my priorities are my priorities and answering an email might take a few days or some days I'm on social media and some days I'm not. And I really try to tune in to myself and my needs and the needs of my family and make sure that those are met and the rhythm is with us, not with the rest of the world. And that's really okay with me. Like, I don't, I don't need to keep up with the Joneses at all. <laughs> and I'm fine with not doing that. We may only go out and do something once a month or, I mean, we go to the farmer's market every Saturday, but we may only go out and do like an activity or whatever, like once a month, but we like it that way. And it works for us. So I guess if I have any advice about this, it's definitely make healing your priority. It is the most important thing. If you have chronic illness, you know this, like healing is the priority over anything else. Trying to please other people, trying to keep up to their pace, trying to do whatever and do whatever. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And that's really okay. It's really okay. You don't have to live for other people. You don't have to live by anyone else's standards. It's not about trying to look a certain way or trying to be a certain way as far as um, in other people's eyes or to not have them judge you or whatever. Because the only important thing is how you feel inside and how you feel about yourself and how you feel about your life. It really is. And if you you know you're healing and you know that that's what's important and that's what needs to happen, then you're going to just be okay with whatever pace you need to be at and whatever way you need to do it. And there are people that do it totally different than me. There are people who work full-time jobs in emergency rooms and whatever. Like there are people who have all kinds of different jobs and they are healing and that works for them and they keep up and it's, it's different. It's like everybody has different needs and that's fine too. Like, there's no right way to do this. There's the way that's right for you. There's your way, right? And incorporating things a little bit at a time, taking your time to, you know, really make those things a part of your routine and a part of your life. That's the way that works, you know? You know what I mean? That's long-term success. Not trying to do everything at once, not trying to do everything perfectly, but just like what you can do as you can do it and the way you need to do it. And that's, that would be my advice, I think, is to say, just give yourself permission to do it however it needs to be that's going to work in your world. That's my advice. I hope this helped. I hope this was um, informative. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me, how does healing show up in your life? How is your, what is your routine? And how does it go for you? What things have you found have changed since you started this healing path as far as like the way you interact with the world? You know what I mean? I would love to hear that. I would love to know. If you have any questions, always, always, always. Or if you just want to leave a comment and, you know, and tell me what you're thinking or how you're feeling, that's great too. I love that. Thank you so much for watching. I know I already said it, but thank you. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. You, you can subscribe to my channel down below. You can ding the bell if you want to be notified when I post a new video. I always try to post on Wednesdays and I'm trying to get more videos out. But healing is my priority, so it doesn't always happen. I will see you next time. Many, many, many blessings for your continued healing. I love you. Stay curious. See you next time. Bye-bye.